So today we're looking at color management when it comes to cameras. Now, this is gonna be an ongoing series until I run out of cameras, of course. So if you wanna see a certain camera or a certain color space, leave a comment below and I'm sure we'll get to it. But we're not talking about Rec. 709, we're talking about raw or log footage because we've already done Rec. 709. Plus that really applies to all cameras, that just doesn't apply to a certain camera. So let's jump in Resolve and I'll show you how to do this camera. The Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera, the OG. I think is the best one when it comes to the color science in the black magic cameras. A little disappointed that they moved on to different types of color science with the 4K. I think the 6K, they made it a bit better, but I think the original has the best color science, especially when it comes to skin tones. But of course, we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about color management. So today I'm gonna to show you two different ways. I'm gonna show you how to do it in the project settings, and then I'll show you how to do it in a node base tree setup, which I think is a much better way. So first things first, let's do color management in the settings. So just come down here to your project settings, this little cog hiding away in the corner here. Go to color management. I've already done this, obviously. For our color science, we're going to change this to DaVinci YRGB color managed. Then we're going to take off automatic color management because we want to do it all ourselves. Color processing mode, we're going to go down to custom. Now, before moving on, just a quick tip with Blackmagic cameras, you don't have to change your camera raw settings because Blackmagic has already sorted all that out for you, I guess because they're the same company. So, you know, just to make it easier. Now in a color management setting, we're gonna go to input color space. Now this is the only thing that will change from project to project because this is referring, of course, to your camera. So whatever input color space your camera has, this is where you would choose it. So because we're using the original Blackmagic Pocket, we can come down and choose that one, which is the Blackmagic Design Film Gen 5, not number one, number five. Output color space, this is referring to the color space we wanna work in. Because we wanna work in a wider color space to get the best range for our colors, we wanna be working in DaVinci Y RGB gamut, or you can of course work in RE Log C3, which I think is something I might move into. We can jump into Aces, but today we're gonna be working in Ye old black magic white gamut down here. Now timeline working luminance, we're gonna set this to custom. Nits, we're gonna go 10,000 because we wanna have a nice range when it comes to that footage, we don't want any clamping. So if you did like a lower number, let's say 48, then you're gonna get clamping on those highlights. In this case, the higher the number, the better, even though 10,000 is overkill, but it doesn't really matter. Output color space, we wanna be in Rec. 709 gamma 2.4. Gamma 2.4 is of course referring to your monitor. So if you're using a laptop, you might wanna set this to Gamma 2.2. Limit output Gamma 2, you can leave that as output color space. Input DRT, really important, change this to none. We don't resolve to do any adjustments to our footage before we're starting to grade, meaning we don't resolve to do any tone mapping or anything like that. Output DRT, we wanna change this again, and we're gonna change this to luminance mapping. So all these settings are all very good. Now, just another tip, come down to your 3D lookup table interpolation and change this to tetrahedral. This is a far better one than the other one, which I can't really pronounce, not even gonna try. So tetrahedral, that's the one we're gonna work in. So we're gonna go to save. Now we have footage, which is sitting in a nice spot and ready to be graded. We're working in a wider color space and we can start doing our project. Let's go along and do the node base color management. So we have to take all those settings off. Obviously, it's not going to work. So settings again, let's just go to DaVinci YRGB. And again, we have that flat footage. Let's do the color management in the nodes. So I have some node trees already built up. So I'll do the CST node tree. I'll get rid of this garbage. Okay, we want our CST at the front. Then make a new node back here, Alt S. We want our CST at the end, so our input device transfer and our output device transfer. For our initial CST, we're gonna go down to our effects, color space transform, bring this across. And then we're gonna change our input color space. Again, this refers to your camera. So we're gonna be in Blackmagic Design Film Gen 1. I'm pretty sure it's been a while since I've done original Blackmagic Pocket. But yeah, Blackmagic Design Film Gen 1 looks good enough. Input gamma, we wanna be in Blackmagic Design Film. Output color space, we wanna begin in DaVinci Wide Gamut. Output gamma, DaVinci Intermediate. Tone mapping method, you're gonna change this to none, and this is the same as in the project settings. Everything else is good. Now let's go to our last node. Color space transform again, and it's really important that 
This is your first one or noise reduction before, but nothing else before this node here. And then nothing after this node here. So have everything in the middle here. Now, if you're working with a film LUT, then it would be slightly different, but that is another story. So anyway, with our color space transform, we're gonna go back from DaVinci Intermediate, DaVinci Wide Gamut, sorry. Input Gamma, that's our DaVinci Intermediate. Color space, Rec 709. Output gamma, gamma 2.4. Tone mapping method, change this bad boy to luminance mapping. And again, use custom max input. So this is the same as before in a project setting. So just crank that right up. And then we can actually do a demonstration. So if I were to go right down, we can see clipping going on. That's because we're limiting our range in our highlights here. So let's go back and just change this to 10,000. So now we have a nice range in terms of highlights. So let's go down to our max input nits. Just click use custom max output and 100 is fine. Now for our gamut mapping, which is a hard word for me to say for some reason, we're gonna go down and choose saturation compression. So all these settings are what you want. So this is our last node. So we're taking that DaVinci wide gamut and we're putting it into Rec 709 for our delivery. So this is what you wanna have on. Now, if we go back to our first one, we are going from our camera color space into a wider color space. So that means we are getting more range when it comes to doing all our colors. If we worked in a Rec 709 color space, we're gonna be really limited when it comes to that working range. So to work in a larger color space for me is a lot better and I'm sure it'll work better for you guys. So now of course you've got along, create your project. I already have my node tree set up here and already have a couple of things in place in terms of what my saturation is working under and everything like that. Now, if you wanted to work with the LUT, I would also highly recommend that you put your LUT before your last color space transform and then work that way. So if you're working in a LUT also, I would put it on first and then work in that way because if you put it on after making your exposure, ratio, balance, et cetera, et cetera, you may find that that LUT might do so much to your footage that it's gonna really play havoc and you're gonna to have to make all these changes. So best do it at the start and then work your way backwards. Hopefully that makes sense. That's the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. This is gonna be a series, of course. I think that I said that in the intro. So each Monday, I'm gonna show you some different cameras and their working color spaces. If you wanna see any particular camera, make sure to write it in the comments below and I'm sure I'll get to it. I already have some lined up, but I'm always happy to push others back and bring others forward. I think that makes sense anyway. I hope you have a fantastic day. I hope you enjoyed the short YouTube clip. I'm guessing it's short. Anyway, I've been Drew and I hope you have a fantastic day.